I'm a magnet, I'm a magnet huh. I'm a magnet to these assets yeah. I'm a magnet, I'm a magnet yeah. I'm a magnet, I get mad respect What's going on, I'm Anoki the One Back with another video And in this video I will be reacting to the Jackie Hill Perry testimonial. Now this is requested. I would not just do this on my own. I've been guided to talking more about this. I now live in the neighborhood, so it's like, and I feel like I was pulled to live here and now I'm feeling like I'm pulled to talk about these things more and more. And I have gotten comfortable with having it for myself, but I, now I feel and have been feel, feeling this way for a long time, right? I feel like that's the whole purpose, well, half the purpose of me being guided to a lot of the information that I've been guided to about subjects like this. Um, but I've been resisting because I've just been like cabbage patching, receiving my blessings. You know what I'm saying? Because I've been, I didn't work hard to be where I am today, on today. But anyway, so if you don't know Jackie Hill Perry, all the lesbians, all the black lesbians, all the black people that <laughs> grew up in the church that are around my age know Jackie Hill Perry. They know the Jackie Hill Perry testimonial. And I actually was a bit triggered when it was sent to me because I was like, what you sending me this for? Because it, it gave me some flashbacks. It gave me flashbacks when I had first came out that, that a lot of y'all have this story everybody want to send us the Jackie Hill Perry testimonial as if we all are Jackie Hill Perry okay so I'm going to react to this or respond or whatever I haven't seen this in a very long time so um kind of interested to see how I how I feel about it think about it today my childhood was I don't want to say typical, but I think typical to those growing up in black communities. Dad was pretty much inconsistent. I saw him maybe every few years. He would just pop in, be in my life for six months, and then pop back out and just show up whenever he felt like it. My mother worked every weekend, so I would spend Sundays with my aunt, who was a Christian. Um, and so she would take me to church with her like every single Sunday, which was incredibly boring, but I enjoyed the popcorn that the kids got and the Skittles. Pause, wait. <laughs> Okay, so for one, it like even with the music and everything and her telling her background, it feels like it's setting you up to have the assumption of the gay lifestyle, how the gay lifestyle is created in people. Because people always want to call it a lifestyle. You're living a homosexual lifestyle. Not you're a human living your life. You're living a homosexual lifestyle. And all you have to do is repent from the lifestyle. Lifestyle a lot of times it's determined by the, the, the money you have in the bank account and, and different things like that. But, but what? But I will say that um, I didn't have that lifestyle. And a lot of people, it gets on my nerves that people assume that that's my lifestyle, which for one, for one, not even me being gay, people assume that that's my upbringing. Just me being black. Other black people assume this is my upbringing because, I, because of the color of my skin. So as a layer of being gay, and it, not, not only do they assume that your father was not in the picture at all whatsoever, they assume your mother, you know, you never saw your mother, your grandmother raised you. They also assume you were raped and molested uh, as a child or, you know, accosted by somebody at some point sexually, and they don't actually care if that were to happen. They just want that to be the proof of, as to why you live a lifestyle. So you have all, people have all these assumptions. And, he, and when people tell these stories like this, it's not so much that they're um, having compassion for their story. A lot of times it seems like it's more of confirmation of the bias of the belief that they already have in their mind childhood was a mixture of abandonment but not knowing that's what that was mixed with glimpses of god through my aunt mixed with seeing my mother work hard i think middle school and high school was me chasing <laughs> after <laughs> i swear everybody just like that <laughs> 
wait, 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 wait. I just got a whole flashback. Wait a minute. When I tell you, <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. The hoops and everything. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is hilarious. Ooh Lord. I used to have the belt. I used to have. I know. I don't know if this is a Houston thing or this is like a 2000 thing. I went to Sharpstown. Everybody would go to Sharpstown. And I went to all white neighborhoods, so they didn't know. I mean, school. So they didn't know nothing about these type of belts. They started understanding once I started busting out there with this. So I would go to school with this. this uh, They had like a diamond buckle, and you could put words in it. <laughs> I'm done. I don't remember what letters I put. I put. I would have some kind of word. I don't remember what it was. I think I had my rap name or something in diamonds as a belt. <laughs> and then those uh, those spray paint shirt. I'm done. I'm done. Woo, this is hilarious. Love from people. <laughs> I wanted people to tell me that I'm something, that I'm significant, that I'm somebody. And women, I think, uh, became one of the main sources of that for me. I was confused. I didn't know what to do. I had these feelings that seemed very natural, these thoughts that seemed super normal to me, but I knew it wasn't normal to culture. You know who else, who else wasn't normal to culture? Jesus. Jesus was not normal to the culture, okay? I grew up in black church. That's like a no-no <laughs> is to be gay. And so it was projected all the time that this is not okay. But I had read the scriptures pertaining to it being a sin. And so I just believed it. I didn't try to talk myself out of it. Because to me, I felt like what I read in the scriptures was correlating with the conviction I felt. This feeling correlates with what this is saying. <laughs> it's like, it's not an isolated. I would like for her to explain that more because she went from saying that it felt comfortable and it felt right and it felt normal to saying that the scriptures if she's referencing the same scripture I, I've heard one of them said it's unnatural or something it's not even that it says unnatural but it says uh being with a woman I don't even remember it's been a long time but I'm gonna break it down one day I feel like I'm gonna do a whole series but it's just very vague a lot of them are very vague. Even the stories that they try to reference, like Sodom and Gomorrah, literally was about rape. Like raping people who were not neighbors. Like they didn't know. They would just rape people. They did all kind of terrible things. But being a sodomite is a rapist. It's not a gay person. But with these testimonials, it's cool, but at the same time, it would be nice if they actually like were to dig deeper into what you're talking about. Come to terms with this is how I feel, so I'm gonna do it. The things I knew about scripture, it seemed like they just would not get out of my head. It was just like, God is everywhere, and it was just getting on my nerves. I don't want to be a Christian. I don't want to be saved. Because what I thought Christianity to be was people that just didn't do stuff. You don't listen to secular music, you wear long dresses, you go to church all the time, and you don't curse. If that's what Christianity is, I'm cool on that. I already didn't have peace, but the reminder of the truth was increasing my awareness of my lack of peace. And so I called uh, one of my cousins who was a believer, and she was like, you know what? I believe that God is going to show you how much you need him. I'm like, okay, whatever. I think over the course of some months, that's when I got arrested. My dad ended up passing away from a motorcycle accident, which really broke me because it was kind of like this realization that we'll never talk. From there, me and my mother's relationship was just like, we were not close, we were not cool. It was like everything I was doing, my entire life became uncomfortable. It became isolated, it became just lonely. When I was 19 and feeling God speak to my heart and tell me what you're doing will be the death of you. Like, this is not an idea anymore that sin will kill me. It's not an idea anymore. This is crazy because I wonder if we're like the same age because it seems like we have parallel experiences on the totally opposite. I wouldn't say the opposite spectrum, but it, it really is. It's so interesting. I'm going to let this finish. So I can 
break down why. More that God is not pleased with this. Like this is reality and I have to deal with it today. When I reckon with that, I knew that I could not save myself. I knew I could not walk away from these things because I enjoyed them way too much. And so I knew from Bible study at church when I was five, you die for people like me. You said you'll forgive people like me. And so I'll just believe that. I was in a church in two weeks wearing girl clothes in a week. That was strange. I wasn't used to wearing regular bras and I had to understand how to sit like a woman again because I was used to sitting like a guy. Just relearning womanness. He did what he had to do to grab me because I would not have chose God apart from God choosing me. It looks, it looks like she dressing like a stud to me. I mean, maybe, is this recording me? Maybe not, maybe not like a, as hard of a stud as she was before. That's, that's I probably would have wore a few years ago. But anyway, so at the end of it, she just said she wore girl clothes. She did not, and never in any of her testimonials have I ever heard her say that she just randomly grew a desire for men and she just stopped having a desire for women and blah, blah, blah. And a lot of these um, ex-gay people um, over time, because people would be calling they bluff like, girl for real they'll start saying well you know I do still feel these what this way I still look at people and uh, like yeah she fine or whatever but I don't have those I don't act on those desires and blah 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 and it just to me do you that's your path that's your journey now why I say it just seems like we have parallel paths but on the opposite end okay it's so interesting so I guess I'll give my testimony and I stopped giving my testimony because for one um when I would give my testimony uh people would assume that it, 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 you'll once you hear it you'll understand why religious folks didn't like that testimony but it's real really happened it has been my life and I've been blessed okay um so but another reason why I stopped giving my testimony is just because it's like people would try to pick apart my story to say, aha, aha. They try to force things. They try to force things, okay, that I'm not saying. And to me, it's disrespectful. I haven't talked about my spiritual journey. I just started talking about my spirituality because it's been so sacred to me and near and dear to my heart. And I didn't want nobody to throw off my relationship with God. I didn't need to 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 other people to pat me on the back and tell me, "Oh my gosh, you're blessed. You're such a blessing. You're so uh, uh, anointed." Da, 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 da. I didn't need that. I didn't want that because it wasn't going to happen anyway. <laughs> the, the things I said, God, oh well, the devil is blessing. That's the type of thing when you don't align exactly with people's assumptions and different things like that. Okay, so my experience, right? Um, my, (laughs) this is crazy how, this is crazy. Okay. So I grew up, um, super close to my dad, like super daddy's girl. He, I mean, I couldn't imagine him just like not being in our lives. Like me and my sister's lives. It, It just, he's the type he and this is weird because it don't even sound like a type because it seems so outlandish to to most people, which is weird. It trips me out. But he, if if we were if my mom took me and my sister and and and, and jetted down the road, he would be like enough. I don't know if y'all seen Enough by uh, Jennifer Lopez. He would be. He would be chasing us like he is a, a serial killer. I, I can't imagine him. <laughs> That's how serious he was. Like, that was his, a part of his dream. And I'm starting to get a little emotional. Was to have a family, take care of his family. Okay? I could never... It didn't even make sense in my mind. As a kid, just growing up, like, I literally... We're going to the grocery store. I'm on his hip everywhere he goes. He can't take a step without me being right there. Like, my mom worked a lot. Because, um, like, I think when I was around 
um like going to junior high my dad started to get really sick but she had noticed little things he had um frederick's ataxia similar to ms so slowly but surely you get sick to where you end up being in a wheelchair so um she had already wanted to start her hair salon but that was like a driving motivation because she knew that he wasn't going to be able to 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 work after a while and she would have to take care of the whole family financially but also take care of my dad as well like physically so they worked together as a team so my dad would work from four like four or five o'clock in the morning until like 2 p.m my mom would work from like 10 p.m sometimes to midnight hustling doing hair starting her hair salon and so my dad he would pick us up from school and he would cook us dinner or make sure we ate at night. He had a, he was very structured. He had a routine every day of the week. We had a different type of food. Mondays was a certain kind of food we ate. Tuesdays was a certain kind of food. We had pizza on Thursday and we had fast food on Friday. Cabbage passion at the McDonald's. Every, it was consistent. It was, you know, it was structured. Right. And, um, you know, he, he was very, I wouldn't say he was like a loving father, but he kind of like he didn't have to say it. You just knew his presence was always there. was never not going to be there. We would always watch uh, movies together. And like we spent a lot of time. We spent more time with my dad than we spent with my mom because she was hustling and 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 doing building the business as kids. So for a lot of people to assume that my dad was just you know, he was a deadbeat dad or, you know, whatever is annoying. Uh, he did have some anger issues. Uh, but when I like, because he got sick, whenever he got sick, he became more verbally abusive and, and different things like that. And he was bedridden. So we really had to take care of him. So a lot of times, like my childhood, like the relationship I had with my dad when he was healthy, it kind of got um, blocked out, right? So I didn't think about those things. I just thought about him, how he was when he was sick, was a totally, a very different person, right? And so I had to deal with that from junior high until high school. And for me, I kind of felt like I was different when I was like five years old. Most people say that when you first start seeing people uh, looking at the same, the opposite sex, whatever. I'm looking at girls. I had, I've had crushes on girls since I was six, seven, eight. Okay. Does that mean I had to act on everything? No, but I just knew what I liked. I knew what I liked. Y'all know what y'all like. Okay. Why is that? What, what, what? So, and then the, the, the reason for me, and I'm not gonna say the reason, but I've been masculine since I was a kid but I'm a lot like my dad. I'm just like my dad. When people, when my family see me just moving in the world, just how I am, they're like, okay, that's, that's, that, you, your daddy, you, your daddy. And I don't know why people are so weird when somebody actually is gay. Now it's just some weird thing or whatever. I, when people have girl dads, a lot of times they have that one daughter who is just a lot like them, maybe a tomboy, whatever, want to do everything with them. That's, that's normal. That's even in ancient times. Anyway, so that was me. We had matching J's, okay, and everything. So, um, yeah, and I'm still a lot like my father to the point where <laughs> my parents was good looking. I like pretty women, okay. I, I'm just, I'm a lot like my daddy, okay. That's just, that's just what it is. So that, um, and then okay to move forward. But I was, I was like. I didn't even, this is legit the truth, okay? I grew up in an all-white school. I went to church, 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 and uh, super, super sheltered. See, people be assuming I was super sheltered. I really didn't even know, like, lesbian couples were a possibility until I was a teen, like, late teenager. Now, people don't be believing me when I say this, because people always want to assume, oh, you've seen it somewhere, and you assume, I legit... I legit didn't even know (laughs) the stuff I did not know until I was like 18 is insane. Like it's crazy. So I was super, super sheltered. Um, and so when my dad died when I was 19, 
he ended up getting cancer, but he had been super duper sick, you know, all throughout while I was in high school. And um, he passed away when I was 19. So parallel experiences. I was super sheltered, super religious. Hadn't dated anybody, period. I tried to to force myself to date guys, and that was a failure. So I was like, okay, I'm going to be a nun because I don't want none of (laughs) y'all. So... Because I literally legit didn't know I could have a relationship with a woman and not, like, drop down in a hell instantly. I legit, in my mind, I thought that was was, was going to happen. So uh, my dad passed away, and that was something that was, like, super spiritual that, like, awakened me in a way because I still felt his p- presence to the point where, uh, I was writing a rap, so I'm just tell y'all my all kind of different testimonials. Okay, I was writing a rap, and because I was making a lot of music back then, just to express myself, because I had a lot of anger issues dealing with racism, dealing with my father, dealing with my sexual. I didn't know at the time, but I was also dealing with my sexuality, all kinds of stuff, and so I would rap to you know get all that out, just get it out, and it was great. So. When he passed away, I didn't cry because I had all kinds. Of, I just was cold. When it, when I'm talking about cold, cold blooded. So in it, on the outside, I didn't seem like I was cold. I seemed like oh, she's just a sweet church girl. Blah blah blah. When I tell you this heart was ice box, like where my heart used to be. So when he passed, didn't cry, didn't really feel anything. And I'm, I'm, to me, I'm going to just be real. I'm not going to fake cry if I don't, I'm not feeling it. I'm just be how I am, who I am. So, and people were mad, but I'm just like, excuse me. You don't know what I didn't been through. I'm not about to fake anything for you right now. So, um, I was writing. It was like the day after I found out that he passed. I was in my car. I was writing and I was writing a, a, a rap to him in first person. I think that's what it's called. So I was speaking directly to him. And I was having a conversation because we hadn't had, we hadn't really had conversation. My dad was a really quiet guy. He just did things. A lot of masculine men, they just do things. They don't talk too much, right? Especially from the South. That's, you know, whatever. He's indigenous. That's how the indigenous people were a lot of times. They just didn't talk too much. They just moved. They just did. And that's how he was. And then also he got sick, so over time it was just like, you know, even if we were to be having a conversation, he his mind wasn't there, if you understand how when people get sick, that's what happens sometimes. So I'm having this direct conversation. I'm saying, you know, uh, how I felt. And I try to think back when I was a kid and, and get back into that place. You know, you took care of me. It wasn't like you were you just – whatever you know you took care of me when I was a kid but I I wasn't really feeling it I wasn't really remember like that but anyway so halfway through the conversation it flips to where he's speaking to me in the first person directly he's like Amber I know we never really had a conversation I still have the record I still have the song it's it's like sacred to me I don't even share it to people anymore but um and he started speaking directly and explaining how, you know, he, all he ever wanted was to take care of his kids. But then he ended up being having to be taken care of and it just destroyed him and just all the spiritual warfare. And it, he said uh, uh, my, his body was taken over. People don't talk about this, but even in the Bible it talks about how people's body gets taken over sometimes when they get sick and different things like that. It's real. So the the person that I had grew to know was not the person who was my father, if that makes sense. So just going through the whole thing, and then at the end, he's like, you can live your life now. You are done waiting, right? And that was like a deep, like, that was the first time I had felt in a very, very, very long time because I just was cold. And so I just, halfway through, actually, I called my mom when I first felt like, he was speaking through me, like I could feel it, right, and I hadn't finished it or whatever, I called my mom freaking out, crying, I'm like, you know, I told her, uh, I feel like he's speaking through me, through the rap, and she's like, just, just finish, just finish writing it, and I'm like, I'm expecting her to be like, girl, we need to take you to the hospital, you need to get your head checked, something going on with you, that's what I'm expecting her to say, but she's like, just finish writing it, I'm like, okay, 
So I get the pen and paper, and lo and behold, I ended up finished writing it. And um, that song we played the whole ride through the, this is going to be long, uh, the whole ride through, like, uh, the limousine ride to the funeral the whole way the whole way back we played the song over and over and over again I ended up performing it was terrible I should I, I don't know <laughs> it was a mess but my heart was in the right place I had never performed before but that was like the initial awakening for me that's when like I realized okay I have a soul there's some deeper stuff out here that 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 that, that, that I wasn't told and but at first how it uh, came out was that I was just freaked out like I was like okay I don't want to go to hell there's literally legit my dad was talking to me so he, clearly he's somewhere around I don't know where yet okay but I'm trying to figure this out okay and so I'm going through this whole thing in the in initially because he said my body had been taken over okay if you understand what I mean possessed okay this is deep this is stuff people don't be talking about this is stuff we how, y'all should be talking about this stuff in church what's going on and that's how I was feeling at that time. <laughs> and I would approach people, ask them about stuff, and they'd just be super vague. So I had to go off on my own and start, like, really exploring my spirit, my soul. It's just like, I have a soul. Like, what is going on? Like, why? You know? <coughs> and so it initially went where I hyper-studied the devil that's what uh, spiritual warfare um possessions so there's a sector of um like christianity where they're like super like oh blah 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 just pretty much trying to make money and patting everybody on the back except gay people okay come as you are unless you're gay so there's that part of christianity where you should be twerking in the uh, church all that but if you're gay, oh, we have a place for you. Hell, they have the <laughs> Christianity, but then they have the Christianity where it's like, you know, your soul can be taken at any time. There's demons everywhere, and everybody is, is, is half, if you laugh, you're possessed. If you smile, you're possessed. That side, and that's where I ended up. Because they're the only people who was actually, like, talking about some deep spiritual type of stuff that I was starting to understand like veil being lifted so why did i do this i read a book called the battle is the lord's lord have mercy that book had me and the 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 title is called the battle is the lord's but the whole bat the whole book is about how to fight spiritual war but it like for one it was way too much for me at the time but at the same time it was just like taking everything into your own hands and not allowing God to fight your battles. Which, which So I was out here trying to fight. <laughs> like They got a lot of uh, people right now still, even politically, all these other, trying to fight, 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 fight. It says the battle is the Lord's. The battle is the Lord's. Okay, so anyway, so that was a phase. Okay, and so at that phase, I had got so – if y'all are paying attention, how parallel, when I talk about how parallel the experiences are, it's crazy. <coughs> so this incident is, is is being a little much for me right now. But anyway, so what had happened was I had gotten so super hyper religious, religious, everybody had demons running through them. Everybody had, had <laughs> I had gotten like, Girl, I stopped listening to all secular music, which I'm still very like, and that's why I don't judge any part of my life, any part of my story. Like, I, like, oh my gosh, back then I was a terrible person and now I'm saved. No, like my whole journey was to build me into the person that I am. And I appreciate every phase. So, <clears throat> so I'm still very hyper vigilant of what I'm listening to. So that's not, I learned a lot through every you know, but I was like, oh, I'm not listening to nothing but Christian music, Christian rap, Christian R&B. And they had some good Christian R&B back in the day. They probably still got some. But I was like, oh, I was finding some stuff. I could have been a whole Christian DJ in this piece. But anyway, so 
the, I got to a point, I realized I was pushing everybody away because I was so judgmental. I thought I was just the king of the world. I thought I was, I, I was saved, repented, free, but I was in bondage, lonely, and depressed because I had pushed everybody away and I was super judgmental. And uh, yeah. And so one night I was just like, this is the first time out of all this hyper religion that I had going on in myself. The first time <clears throat> I actually prayed for a character trait. Now I had prayed for to win basketball games. I had prayed for, cl- for clothes. I had prayed for little stuff, you know, to get out of trouble, whatever. I had never really had gotten into trouble. Like really, really <laughs> never. Like I wasn't out here doing none, but, and also when I was hyper religious, I knew I wasn't trying to mess with no guys. So I literally legit had decided, Lord, I'm going to be a nun. I'm cool. I'm cool. So I will be, you know, Virgin Mary forever. I, I'm not even tripping. If I have kids, it's going to come because Virgin Mary. I'm a, I, that's a whole nother video I can talk about, parthenogenesis. Um, but anyway, I prayed for compassion and understanding. I don't want to be, this doesn't feel right. There's something wrong about this, how I'm feeling, right? Now, the church applauds it. You know, all these religious people are okay with me being this super hyper judgmental, uh, depressed, lonely, bored, annoying person. You know, they're all okay with this shit. But I'm not okay. I don't like it. It doesn't feel right. It, 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 it doesn't, something wrong with it. So I prayed for compassion and understanding those are the two things I prayed for and then I laid down and I went to sleep and I know I've heard her testimonial before if she kind of talked about is parallel right now she talking about I have smoked weed I have been running with girls I have been you know doing all these different things I told myself I didn't want to be a Christian blah 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 I was done with it they're judgmental I didn't like it blah blah, blah. my story is the exact opposite like we're seeing here so I, I said, okay. Now she, when in her story, she says she got to a point where she was running the streets, whatever. Not like that, but, you know, as far as Christians go, she was running the streets. So dramatic. So um, she laid down and went to sleep, and she heard a voice that said, she will be the death of you. I remember that when I was a kid. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> so, but, so my story I pray for compassion and understanding. I laid down. I went to sleep. <laughs> Legit. This is crazy. Um, and I wasn't, I don't even feel like I was all the way asleep. I feel like I was kind of like in between dream state and, a, and awake. And I felt a still voice say, you're gay. You're gay. Le- Legit, bitch. You're gay. How you going to be? How you gonna be judgmental and all this other stuff? And bitch, you're gay. I had never revealed that to myself. In the same way she felt like it didn't it didn't seem like it came from me. I would have never have ever admitted that to myself. But whoever, maybe it was a, a relative, because when I tell the story, people, well, that wasn't God, that was the devil, blah, blah, blah. Excuse me. Excuse me. You, you, do you think somebody gonna say it was the devil in her case? No, they're not. But that's why, I, but anyway, my story is my story. But it was true. That's the thing. Like, why would the devil lie? Why would the devil tell me the truth? Anyway, <laughs> like, I knew I was gay. I, had, I mean, shit. So anyway, um, so, and that was the first time it was like, okay, now I'm going to be judged in the exact same way, worse than how I had been judging all these people. And I haven't done anything. I, ha- I literally have not done I hadn't stolen, I hadn't been drinking, I hadn't been smoking, I hadn't been having sex. I ain't been doing none of these things that these Christians say is so terrible. Like the lifestyle, whatever lifestyle. My, I didn't have no lifestyle. My lifestyle was Jesus. Nothing changed, okay? So, <laughs> legit, my lifestyle was Jesus. Okay, so, nothing changed. Literally. It's just the still voice that told me the damn truth that I already knew and felt. Um, and so I'm like, okay, so what, 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 what we going to do with this, Lord? What we going to do with this? 
And it that was kind of the first time where I was like, instead of looking outside of me, I started to ask for guidance directly to me, direct. Because now I, I'm confused because I haven't done anything different. It's just we, me and you know, me and the Lord. It was between me and God, okay? And so I started being guided to different things, like, coincidental things would happen where it's just perfect so shortly after that um my mom had already set me up with an appointment with a Christian counselor right and so I went and talked to her and that's because my mom wanted us to talk to a counselor after my dad died just to make sure our head is in the right place so I had my one-on-one this first time I had therapy or anything like that so she was like, um, hi, Amber, how you doing? I'm like, oh, uh, I'm gay. <laughs> and then I was just bust out crying. She was the first person I ever told that I was like out loud, said it out loud to. And I was crying. I was like, I'm going to be a, a drug addict. I'm going to be an alcoholic. I'm going to be promiscuous. I'm going to be all these things. She's like, uh, Amber, what? what have you done any of these things and I'm like no but I'm gay and that means I'm gonna be blah 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 I'm going to hell and blah, 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 blah. I was just going on and on and on and she was like Amber uh I'm gonna need you to understand that you you, you literally haven't done any of those things okay that just being being gay is not going to make you be an alcoholic and a drug addict and promiscuous if that's not how or what, what if that and I'm like, really? What do you mean? I thought that that's what that meant, you know? I thought that went hand in hand. And she was like, no, it just means you are attracted to people of the same sex. And I'm like, okay, but what about the other stuff, you know? Like, the, 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 the hell stuff. And she's like, well, they have people, like, I encourage you to do some more research. And it, she she had to have been the perfect person because I had never heard anybody say these things to me in my life. I just, everybody I had ever heard say anything about gay, it was just like hell on earth for you. Your life is going to be hell on earth instantly. So she said, there's people who have families that raise kids that do all kinds of things and live happy lives. It's just, you know, you have to heal. Everybody has to heal. And she gave me a book called um, Healing the Child Within. And that was the first time I was introduced to healing I have been in the church my whole life since born. Since born. Okay, since born I've been in church. And not once did I, w- did I f- ever feel like I should heal my childhood or anything going on, period. Right? And so a- even though everybody ha- in, on some level has to heal things from the childhood, it's just crazy. So I got deep into that book and I started, you know, healing and different things like that. Healing, um, you know, stuff from childhood wounds and things. Like my relationship with dad, after he got sick and then realizing, yeah, he actually was a pretty good dad when he was not sick. You know what I'm saying? And different things like that. And like a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Self-awareness, huge. But um, so I started coming out to my, I came out to my mom um that didn't go well but it's like even before that well I came as a mom right after I came I was happy I was going high I'm like okay that's how it's gonna be psych okay <laughs> I came out to my mom I'm gonna just tell you it was a, a hot mess okay it wasn't like the movies like oh I knew the whole time or I'm sorry that you you uh I, f- I made you feel like you couldn't tell me. <gasps> That's what I see all the time now. Bitch, it was not like that. And even on these daggone coming out videos on YouTube, they got y'all mind brainwashed thinking that that's how everybody experiences. Hell no. Nah. Hell no. Nah. That was not my experience. Okay. So, yeah, I'll just leave it at that because we have a great relationship now. We've come up a very long way. But anyway... But yeah, my my family was super uh, uh, judgmental. Some people said stuff. Some people didn't say stuff, but I knew they were saying stuff. They probably still saying stuff, but I don't give a god damn. But anyway, that was when I was on Facebook. So they had, um, I I put a song. It was actually a really deep song that I had made about like what I was learning and also uh, just coming out. That was months later. 
after God had guided me to a book called what the Bible really says about homosexuality, which broke down all the scriptures in the historical context and everything, just breaking down and showing how it doesn't condemn two same sex people falling in love with each other and building a family together and living their life. Nowhere in the Bible does it do that. Nowhere in the Bible does it condemn two adult people of the same sex being in love with each other and treating each other great, having a healthy relationship. Matter of fact, there are stories, some of the, 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 the strongest, the best love stories in the Bible are with same sex soulmates. Okay. And I'm gonna leave that to another video, but that, but also all this research and stuff like that opened me up to the idea of soulmates. I had never thought about soulmate. I'm like, my standard of love became bigger because it's not just based on the surface level stuff like they would, the society would have us believe. Like, I have a soul. My soul, I've had, my soul, it ain't no man or woman. It even says that in the Bible. When you come to the kingdom, you are neither male nor female, Jew nor Gentile, slave nor free. All are one. All are one, not two, not three, not four, not five, one in Christ Jesus. Okay. Hello. Hello. I even have a book called the man Jesus loves. If you, <laughs> if you love Jesus. And that's one of those things that threw me off as a child, because even, as a child, I've been very, I've always been very spiritually advanced. I have always been. And so <clears throat> literally when I was like seven or same age, seven, eight, I'm like, I asked my mom for a pulpit. She's like, what? And not, she was, <laughs> she wasn't like mad, whatever. But she's like, you want a pulpit? Yeah. I'm like, I want a pulpit. Cause I want to, you know, speak like the pastor. And you know, they were so happy about that. My aunts, my, my mom, my aunts, they was happy, excited. But at the same time, I also knew, but from doing research on indigenous history and stuff like that, this is not uncommon. I'm going to start talking about it because people are so obsessed with the gay community and it's for good reason. Like there's, there is some secret information that we need to be revealed. There's a reason why there's always so many gay people running churches and they always want to make it seem like it's evil, right? It, it sometimes it can become evil because when you're in the closet, you allow people to have a uh, bondage over you. You allow people to have control of you because you have something that they can control you with. It's called blackmail. It's called blackmailing. Okay. So, um, but that's a, another thing. So to continue my story, where's that? Oh, so yeah, I was super judged like literally instantly. I had not done anything different. I was still the same person. I hadn't had sex with nobody. I hadn't had a girlfriend, nothing, but instantly I'm going to hell. I have a, a terrible lifestyle. My dad, people were, people were, when I tell you people are sick, it's crazy. It's just like people use my dad's passing and stuff like that as like a weapon to, to, to point to why I am gay now it ain't that I'm just gay. I it, I'm coming out because I'm allowing. My, I follow what my dad said. You can live your life now. You're done waiting. Okay, that's what that's what my daddy says. So that's what I'm living. I'm doing being my true my life, not lifestyle. Living my life, my true authentic life, who I truly am. Okay, um, and that's a part of it. It's not all of who I am. It's just a little. It's just a little part. That's a little important because the people you love is real, real important. You know, that's what well supposedly Christianity is supposed to be about but anyway so I just experienced what it felt like to be on the opposite end of compassion and understanding right like the like to be super hyper judged to be super hyper like attacked just crazy for 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 you see so that just really woke me up and God was like guiding me to all this information to c consistently reassure me like you're good with me. You may not be good with all these people, but guess what? Jesus wasn't good with all these people. Jesus wasn't good with all these people. If people actually study Jesus, y'all would have been didn't crucify Jesus. Okay. So 
because he went against the the scriptures of those times because there was no Bible. That's the part that y'all forget. Y'all want to use Jesus as an idol. Never in the Bible does it say use Jesus as an idol. Matter of fact, the, the Ten Commandments says worship no false idols. Jesus is an idol that Christians worship, and the Bible is an idol that Christians worship. They're both idols in the in Christianity. And I'm but this is for another video because it's getting long already. But you shouldn't be worshiping false idols, okay? So Jesus was killed because he went against the scriptures, okay, and the writings and the laws of those times, okay, to love someone unconditionally because he was guided by what? The Holy Spirit, by God directly. He had a direct relationship. You see how that, see how they like to skate past that part anyway, so yeah, and it did teach me, literally, it taught me, under, like that experience taught me understanding and compassion in a way that I had never felt. I'd never understood it like that. And it started to make me want to see people, even homeless people I saw differently. I saw everybody differently. It was like my eyes were seeing for the first time, right? And all these people with these flashy stuff and all this other stuff, I'm now looking with my spiritual eyes. I'm not looking with my earthly eyes. I'm not looking with my scripture notes. I'm looking with spiritual eyes. I'm looking energy. I'm looking at spirit. They got people that, that are shiny and bright with their clothes, but their spirit is extremely dark. Okay. And people don't, they don't really talk too deep about this in the church because a lot of them people on the damn stage is dark spiritually. Okay. So anyway, so that's what it taught me. It taught me and I've consistently like anytime, even if I had a thought in my head, it was like, Lord, like I'm good. We good. I'm, ch I'm chilling. I could be a nun. That's what I'm saying. Like our stories are totally opposite, but it was like throughout the years, it just consistently reassured me. Like I like, it's like, it's okay to love. That is the whole thing. Love. Get, get, get love okay that's what it always goes back to okay and so that's what I've done and I've never felt the urge to um like spiritually I've never felt guided at any point to not love women because they're women I have never felt the urge to not love women because they're women. That doesn't make sense. When you come to in a lot of times that, that scripture keeps coming back. When you come to the kingdom, you're neither, neither male nor female, Jew nor Gentile. You're neither. Do you think I care? Do you think I care? Do you think I care? Why would I care? Why would I care? Why would I care? That's crazy. Why why would why? Okay. The things that, that actually are like um, detrimental to people those are the things that I, uh, God cares about and that's the thing the church don't be caring about the the sexual sin that they hyper focus on supposedly this supposedly the sexual sin that they hyper focus on is gay people and I'm gonna make videos later about why that is because there's a clear reason why I've learned from these books that I've been guided to but um, especially with my indigenous heritage um, but they don't talk about pedophilia in church. I've never once heard a pastor in church ever in my, I've never, it's what I have never heard a pastor in church condemn pedophilia. If, if they ever have, it was in reference to gay people make, trying to make it seem like gays or some kind of pedophiles. I've never referenced, even though it's almost it's 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 rare for openly gay people to to be like that but it's not rare for your little uncle that you still let at the cookout now y'all will say y'all ask a gay person well uh were you molested were you blah, blah blah and if they say yeah oh that's why you're gay but you're not gonna say you're not gonna say okay who did it who did who who was it who did it and then you find out who did it you're not gonna say who did oh that's who did it y'all don't be having that energy Y'all don't be trying to get them put in jail or, or beat them up or, or, or do nothing. They still be at the damn the, 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 the damn cookout, okay? Y'all don't care. A lot of guys, they damn near annoyed. They're tired of hearing it from women saying that that, that happened to them. Y'all don't give a damn. 
You don't give a damn. It's, that's wild. But y'all have all this energy for somebody living their best life, if they are, right? It, it's so triggering to see a gay person in a happy relationship. Y'all so triggered. And the other part why y'all triggered is because we're naturally non-procreative. Okay? <laughs> so you're supposed to be our... Okay, I'm going to take this last couple minutes now. Because I have shorter videos that I'm going to talk about this. Because I just recently had this epiphany. I don't know why. But... One of the big things with the black community, they try to make it seem like, and also religious, they try to make it seem like, um, okay, oh, well, it doesn't really make sense that people in a relationship are loving each other. Like, that's sin. It doesn't really make sense. So they're like, you know why? You know why? Because uh, naturally, when you have sex, you're supposed to have a, a, a child, right? So if y'all, y'all can't have children, y'all are depopulating the, the, the community, y'all, you know what I'm saying? It's unnatural because a child, you can't have a child. So if that's the case, why are there so many women screaming and yelling for their right to have abortions. Why do y'all wear condoms? Why do y'all take birth control pills? Why do y'all get your tubes tied? Why do y'all get vasectomy? Why do y'all do all these things that you think birth control pills are natural? You think abortion is natural? Y'all is that is that natural? Why are y'all doing these things? You know why? You know why? You know why? You know why you're doing these things? Huh? Because clearly, you have under come to understand in, in modern times and all times that there's more purposes to have sex than to have children, right? It's It can be. If you're having procreative sex, then that can happen, but that's not the sole purpose, right? You, you intellectually understand that, right? But what's the other side that I've never heard anybody put together is that gay people naturally have non-procreative sex. Gay people naturally have non-procreative sex with the people that they love. We can have procreative sex at any time. We can choose if we want to have a child. And this real realization happened when somebody comment. I, I mean, I sometimes like negative comments. I'm working on transmuting energy, and it's just like, you know, it's 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 work. Sometimes it's just too much negative. It's just you get out of my face. But some things, this boy came on my comment section under a video. I'm talking about genealogy. He's like, I find it strange that you're so interested in genealogy when you can't procreate as a lesbian. I'm like. Bitch. Do you know I'm a woman? Do you realize I'm a woman? Okay? And that took me down a whole rabbit hole learning about parthenogenesis, like Virgin Mary, how you can, how a woman in, in indigenous time can have a child without a man. Okay? Without a man's sperm at all. It's just fertilizer. First of all, y'all give yourselves too much credit. It's fertilizer. Recognize we have the egg. Ain't no damn seed. We're not plants. It's an egg in here already. Okay, you have fertilizer. Since when do you put fertilizer on grass and say, oh, the fertilizer created the grass? Hell no. Anyway, <laughs> I'm a woman, okay? I can have procreative sex. I can have, I can do procreative activities to create a baby without having sex, okay? Hello? Stop being dumb. But the person I love I can naturally have as much pro non-procreative sex as I want. And I don't have to worry. I, naturally, I don't need a condom. I don't need birth control. I don't need... Nobody has to get a vasectomy, clearly. Don't got to get my two... I don't got to do nothing. Straight natural. Straight, real, raw. Real, raw. You gotta worry about nothing. Matter of fact, okay, this is some and, and, and people try. Well, y'all catch diseases. Men are the carriers of disease. Remember that. Men carry sexually transmitted diseases. Lesbians, okay, who only are with lesbians, okay, are the least likely to get these sexually transmitted diseases that straight women get, uh, and straight men and gay men. 
okay? And if you want to say, oh, gay men get uh, sexually transmitted diseases more than, you know, straight men or whatever, the only reason that would be is because it's one, two men together, two carriers of disease together. It's not because they're gay. It's because two carriers of disease. Are we going to say men, you shouldn't have sex with men because they carry the disease? You know, you're not going to say that, okay? You're not going to say that, okay? Let's tell the truth and shame the devil. But like I said, there's, there's benefits. And God has been guiding me. When I tell you to the benefits, to the gifts, to the, to the, that they don't want to, to the A, to the B, to the, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Why do I say A to the B to the, I don't even think, it's M to the, uh, wait, is it? Mo to the, E to the, Moesha, yeah, I'm tripping. Anyway, see, my name starts with A. So I'll try to make it my, my, okay, anyway. But that's all I got. Okay, this has been an hour. I wanted to shorten this, but it's just not going to be short. But <laughs> I think that's a good way to end it. You feel me? That's a good way to end it. If y'all have questions, comments, you have ideas, because I want to make this a series and I want to have, like, a playlist to when I talk about these things or whatever, maybe out in the world or whatever, I could just send y'all to this playlist. This is not something I want to talk about all the time. Okay? So once I get this, once I get this series out, I'm good. I may touch a little bit, but that's not my whole life. That's a part of my life. Cool. But there's so many other things like my indigenous heritage. There's, you know, me being a woman that I've learned about that I want to share more about, you know, womanhood, because that's being attacked clearly because they're attacking human life. And when you attack a human life, the first place you should go is where they create human life. Okay. That makes sense. So anyway, like, subscribe, comment below what you think. If you have questions, DM me if you have some ideas, you have some stuff you want me to react to. And I'll see y'all on the next video.